At the end of this scene, there's a five second clip which consists of two shots. And it is quite possibly my favorite moment in the whole film. All part of the plan. Why is that? Well, because Dune is a special movie. Oh, no, 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 not that one. No, goodness, no. Although, uh, Dune 1984 is a pretty special movie in its own way. <laughs> Sorry, David Lynch. Dune Part 1 is the most well-crafted film I've seen in years. Denis Villeneuve, this mad lad French-Canadian, has an understanding of the art of cinema that I envy every frickin' day. He's not just familiar with story or acting or cinematography or music. He knows how to weave these things together to create a cohesive whole. And he does it in such a way that it amplifies all of them, exploring themes and characters in a nuanced manner that is perfectly tailored to the medium of film. Is this making any sense? I feel like I might be reaching movie nerd capacity. All right, let me see if I can show you. So the first image we see is a sand dune. Makes sense, because of, you know. The first four or five shots are all dusty desert, warm natural colors. Sand, dust, orange lights, dust, human skin tone, human skin tone, human skin tone, and then BAM! Can you tell who our villains are? The film uses visual shorthands like this to help you keep your bearings as it introduces you to the wacky world of Dune's politics. Now, that might seem really simplistic, nothing to write home about, but it's emblematic of the deliberate and clever storytelling this movie partakes in, of the way that the movie invisibly guides you through a narrative that could have easily been a mess of boring exposition. Instead, it manages to make that story fulfilling and profound. Like with this scene transition. <laughs> The sharp sounds of Paul hitting the dummy are in complete contrast to the quiet conversations that filled the scenes before. It wakes us up and gets us ready for a small action scene. Oh, and I love this shot where we see that Paul is in danger before he does. That's a funny little thing that I like to call a metaphor for the whole movie. Of course, if you're talking about excellent craftsmanship, you gotta talk about the Gamja Bar one of the most perfect scenes ever put to film. I absolutely adore this moment at the beginning where we see a shot of Paul starting to walk forward, only to cut back and realize he hasn't moved. Like the Reverend Mother is so powerful that just being in her present compels you to do what she wants. And the choice to give Jessica the fear is the mind killer speech is honestly inspired. Because then, by cutting back and forth between her and Paul in his trial, the film implies that he's thinking and feeling the same things. It gives the scene a dynamic quality it wouldn't have otherwise, and strengthens the bond between this mother and her son. Dune cares deeply about Jessica and Paul's relationship. I mean, the first real scene of the movie is just a conversation between them, as she encourages Paul to try and use his power. But as he's doing that, we cut to a carving of a bullfighter. It seems like a bit of an odd choice, until the film explains that Paul's grandfather died bullfighting, and the bull represents the presence of his ancestors looking down on the scene. I was obsessed by the idea that when you use a voice, you, ch you, should, you should be um, channeling ancient voice inside yourself. The movie does that a lot where it shows us an idea or an image that we don't understand, only to later reveal the context that makes it relevant. Because of this technique, the film feels incredibly resonant. Normally, a payoff like that takes an event from earlier in the movie and uses it to inform what happens later. And don't get me wrong, the movie definitely does that, but this is taking something that we learn later in the film and using it to inform what happened earlier. It's almost like the future is changing the past, which then changes the future. Do you often dream things that happen just as you dream them? Yes. It gives the impression that the movie is like an echo chamber, with different themes all bouncing off the walls and reverberating out through the film. 
And it all comes to a head in the understated climax, as Paul realizes that part of him must die so that another part may live. A part of him that's maybe less human. Maybe more in line with what his ancestors wanted him to be. That's what makes this movie special. Villeneuve's Dune is able to enhance its story through the way it's constructed. And the moment I first realized how smart this movie is came right here. That little editing trick is so effective that it actually gives me a sense of vertigo making it feel like Paul is standing on the edge of a sheer cliff. And why does the movie do this? Well, think about the scene it's transitioning into. Paul and the rest of House Atreides are finally going to Arrakis, a dangerous world that they know nothing about. In this scene, Paul is standing on the edge of a cliff, and he's about to jump on. That is S-tier filmmaking. Thanks for watching, my friends. It means a lot to me. Oh, also, Denis got robbed at the Academy. Like, like what? Dune gets a nomination for both Best Picture and Best Adapted Screenplay, and then sweeps the technical categories? But no, Denis Villeneuve doesn't get a Best Director nomination, because I guess the movie just made itself, I suppose. You know what? I'm not gonna